historic time to start things off. Recently, I was training at a local gym with Julie, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, her squat had gotten a lot better. Now, Julie had been doing Olympic weightlifting for a while, and mobility was one of the things that she was really trying to work on for a long time. And it was getting better, but it was really slowly getting better. Now, she stopped doing Olympic weightlifting and started doing more bodybuilding style training for how long? 12 weeks. 12 weeks, no, like 10. thereabouts. And what that incorporated was a lot of unilateral movements. So when she got back to the other day doing squats, um, doing jerks and a few other Olympic movements, her mobility all of a sudden was a lot better. And we were trying to figure out how that happened. And I dropped a little hint earlier. Um, what I think it was is all the unilateral work she was doing. She was doing a lot of lunges. Um, she was doing a lot of lunges and a, a lot of other types of things like lunges. And when she came back to squatting, uh, actually she was squatting as well and there was something specific she was doing with that squatting that helped. Um, so when she came back to uh, Olympic style movements, she was a lot, lot more mobile and she didn't really stretch at all. You don't stretch at all, do you? I do. Like once a year. No. She stretches once a year. No, but I'm pretty flexible. Kind of. She's kind of flexible. She doesn't <laughs> stretch. What I'm trying to say is the bodybuilding style training she was doing <laughs> made her mobility a lot better and she didn't really stretch that much. Maybe once a week, if that. And it's like touching her toes and pretending to do yoga and stuff like that. That's so false. I stretch. You should stretch too. So anyways, what I'm going to show you guys is three different movements that you can use to make your mobility better for squatting without stretching. Now, I'm not saying that static stretching is bad because I do it a lot myself and I've noticed a lot of benefits from doing it, but there are some things you can do that are not stretching that will help with your mobility and help you squatting, front squatting, back squatting, overhead squatting, all that kind of stuff without having to stretch. So the first movement I'm gonna show you guys is really simple. It is a front foot elevated reverse lunge. Front foot elevated reverse lunge, F-F-E-R-L. Very scientific, a very, very advanced movement. So Wait. Julie just brought up the point that she never did these in her bodybuilding program. You know what? Don't care. It's my video. If she wants to do a video <laughs> <laughs> on lunges, she can tell you what she actually did. This is what I think she did. I'm not going to ask her even though she's right here. So front foot elevated reverse lunge. Just grab yourself a plate, throw it on the ground in the gym, slam it down so people really hear you and know you're doing one. Um, I like to use a 45 that has a little bit more uh, girth to it there and uh, basically you just stand on the plate, step back and lunge down until your back knee brushes, just touches the ground. You're not slamming down. I'm stepping back, tapping, driving forward. Very simple. So what you'll notice is when I step back oh, and drop down, the range of motion I can get in my hips it's a lot greater than if I was just doing a regular lunge. What it'll also mimic is the bottom position on this side of a very deep squat. Damn, this guy's going ass to grass on this side. See that? So, this is a great movement for increasing your mobility while also strengthening you uh, in a unilateral manner, one leg at a time. If you want Why are you out of breath? You did like four lunges. <laughs> I'm supposed to be going to firefighting school in a month and you have to be able to run like like a gazelle and I can't even run down the street and back without dying. So anyways, a thing, an element you can add to this movement to make it even harder, make it a great core exercise and also help with your front rack if you have trouble with, with that, which you probably do, everyone does. I've never seen someone do a good front squat, ever, besides myself. And Liu Xiaojun, that's it. Us too. So anyways, you just get your barbell in a front rack position. Try and get all your hands around. 
Stop doing this one little finger thing and saying you're doing a front squat. Silly. Well, now I'm trapped. I can't. <coughs> so anyways, in your front squat position, elbows up, stepping back, tap, drive forward. Same thing, all right? That's really going to help with your front rack, help with stabilizing your midsection and opening up your hips. I would do three to four sets, probably six to 12 reps, not alternating legs. I just do all of them on one side, switch all of them on the other. You can alternate if you want. It's just kind of weird. The next move I'm gonna show you guys is really simple. All it is is a pause squat. A lot of people have trouble with mobility in their squats and a lot of people also rush their squats usually because they're trying to use weight that is too heavy for them, okay? I understand, you're in the gym, there's girls there, there's guys there wearing muscle shirts and their bicep veins are bigger than your leg. It's intimidating, okay? You wanna squat a lot of weight. I'm sorry, your thimble-like body cannot support that much weight and you're just gonna break your form down. So what you need to be doing is Buying, I'm going to sell these glasses. You put these glasses on, they have blinders on the side. You can't see anyone in the gym except for yourself. And then you'll be able to properly perform a squat with the proper amount of weight. So number one, choose the right amount of weight. Number two, we're gonna do a tempo squat. This is really simple. You're just using a tempo on the eccentric portion of the lift or the lowering portion of the lift. You'll use a tempo once you reach the bottom point of your lift and then you're just gonna come up quickly. So I'm gonna get set up as I normally do for a back squat, it's really simple. I'm gonna count, let's say to four on the way down. One, two, three, four. I'll pause for two seconds at the bottom and come back up, okay? One thing you don't wanna do when you're doing that is just count to four and then drop to the bottom at the last second. So I'll see a lot of people doing their tempo squats one, two, when it gets hard, three, four, and then they just drop to the bottom and explode back up. Especially once you get under your knees, so once your hips get below your knees, that's where you wanna control that eccentric and that tempo. So control it the whole way down, give a good pause at the bottom, you can play around with that. Uh, four seconds down, two second pause for a set of four to maybe six reps is really, really tough. I did, that tempo for sets of eight the other day and I was dying. Um, and what you'll start to notice is your body's gonna get more comfortable in that bottom position, your mobility is gonna get better, and you didn't even stretch, which is pretty cool because we all know at the end of the day, once you're done with your training, you just wanna go on Instagram and watch people stretch, you don't wanna actually stretch. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay, the third thing, a, a Cos Cossack squat, Cossack squat. I literally do these every single day. Why do I do them every single day? Because they're fun and when I wear tight sweatpants, you can kind of see my pee pee. So you know, you gotta show that to the other people training in the gym, intimidate them. If I can't lift as much weight as them, I can have maybe a slightly, maybe the, an average, like a, like it might, penis might be bigger, might be shorter, might be the same size, you never know. You gotta use all the angles. Can I lift as much weight as this guy? No. Do I have a bigger dong? No. D like, do I have a cooler car? No. Like, you gotta find an angle. <laughs> do I have more armpit hair than this guy? Yeah. And then just rub it in. Rub it in his face. Show off those pits when you're resting, you know? Just use that against him. So anyways, Cossack squats. What you, what you wanna do is, I like to do two variations. One, uh, I stand as wide as I can get my legs, okay? And I'm just gonna go to one side. I have my opposite leg, or opposite foot flat on the ground. This knee stays over my toe. I'm gonna rotate around to the other side. Back foot stays flat. <laughs> Gunshots. So, you see this variation? I'm keeping my foot flat, keeping my chest up, and I'm just gonna go back and forth. I probably, I usually do uh, six to 10 each side. The next variation, 
is the one where I come down a bit lower, my toe points up to the ceiling, externally rotating with my leg here, chest stays up, and then I'm going to move over, stay low, and same on the other side. Toe points up, knee stays over my toe, chest stays up, stay low, rotate back. Okay? Even just doing this is pretty hard for most people. Uh, what I like to do is, like I said, six to ten each side, and then maybe six to ten, or maybe three to six of those deeper ones on each side before I train. I like doing that just in the middle of the day. Honestly, because I, I do static stretching, I just don't like doing it. It's hard for me to do it. Um, so I like to do some movement stuff like that. So front foot elevated reverse lunge, controlled tempo squats and Cossack squats side to side. Maybe do those before you work out or a couple sets in the middle of the day. And I guarantee you, your mobility in the squat is going to get better without stretching. Try it out. If it does work for you or you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and you got anything, Julie? You seem to know a lot about mobility. Wow. Yeah. You can talk about our March challenge. Oh, uh, yeah. We just ran a pretty cool challenge. It was the Winter of Games challenge for guys and girls for muscle gain or fat loss. There's different programming, different meal plans. Uh, we have a really cool Facebook group, a lot of good videos that we put up in that group, a lot of good banter we get going back and forth, a lot of great ideas as well. And you get a whole PDF on the workouts, nutrition plan, mindset, so many other great things. Uh, it was only 30 bucks, so we had a bunch of people who joined it and got really good results and are building really great habits. So you're not out of luck. February is almost over. March, we're going to be doing the same thing. It's going to be the March Madness Challenge. Nothing to do with basketball, just with muscular madness. Like your muscles are going to be going mad because you'll be going grow, be growing so big. Anyways, you can join that challenge. It's going to be the same but different in the sense that it's going to be better, okay? It's gonna be madness, all right? And yeah, we'll have the Facebook group, we'll have new workout plans, we're gonna have new nutrition plans, new new nutrition plans, and so many other cool things. You can join in the link below. Uh, that will be starting March 1st, so make sure you join. Julie and I run that, so it's really, really fun. I love doing it. And also, you can buy my new program uh, right down below too. And that's just a really good way to get started with your training. So you have those two options. Uh, check it out. And yeah, that's, I don't know. What else? Pretty good. All right, guys, stay safe. It's winter out there. Sometimes there's ice on the ground. Try not to fall. I haven't fallen yet this winter, so pretty good winter for me. You literally slid down a hill and ripped Where? your pants open. Oh, I did fall and a stick rammed up my butt, ripped my pants off my body. You say, not your butt hole. Not my butt hole, my butt cheek. That's why you do glue bridges. That's why I always put glue bridges in my pro. So the ball, the I'm sliding down a snow hill like this. Ah, this is so cool. I thought Julie was fil filming me, so I always do crazy things, you know, to get on film. Anyways, stick goes up my butt, cheek, not hole rips my pants off my body pretty well all, like completely rip rips two holes in my boxers and I, i'm stuck with a stick in my butt cheek not hole cuts my leg up cuts my butt cheek not hole and i ended up surviving but my pants were in tatters i'd walk all the way home embarrassing people were seeing that i just tore my butt cheek up not my hole up <laughs> and yeah that was really terrible so cool Love you guys.